How do you ruin a classic horror film with an insanely scary killer and a very original premise? Well, that's easy. Make a sequel. Not just any sequel, but a sequel that didn't even try to be like the original movie. With A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, they did what I like to call an Exorcist 2, which is where they tried to make a film that is as far away from the original movie as possible. It was just under a year after the original movie came out when the sequel was released. The opening scene is probably one of the best parts of the film. It's the first dream sequence where our hero gets onto a bus being driven by none other than Freddy Krueger. The bus ends up being stuck on top of a rock. Then the boy wakes up and the shitstorm officially begins. <laughs> The film is about a teenage boy called Jesse who moves into Nancy's old room from the first film five years later. It's not long until Jesse starts having nightmares about Freddy saying he wants to take over Jesse's body. His friend Lisa finds Nancy's old diary in his room and they find out that Freddy also attacked Nancy. He goes to his parents scared and they don't give a fuck. And then a parakeet blows up. This is because somehow Freddy is making the house super hot, making the lamps melt, the toaster set on fire and all other shit like that. Freddy also makes everything hot at a party near the end of the film. I'm glad that aspect was only used in this film because it's such a stupid idea. Jesse's dad blames him for blowing up the parakeet and Jesse storms out. He goes to a gay S&M leather bar and then orders a drink. I'm being 100% serious, it is a gay S&M leather bar. This film has lots of homoerotic subtext in it. Don't believe me? Look at this dance our so-called hero does. Now I'm sure you believe me. So while he's at the bar, he sees his gym teacher and he makes Jesse go back to school and do laps. Seriously, you listen to your teacher outside of school? I would have told him to fuck off or at least said no. Jesse's gym teacher orders him to hit the showers and he goes to his office. While there, loads of shit starts falling down and ropes grab him and pull him into the shower. Then while in the shower, the ropes start whipping his bare ass, adding more gayness to this movie. I just want to say for the record, I don't have a problem with the film being incredibly homoerotic. If I was to rank my all-time favourite movies, the Rocky Horror Picture Show would probably be in second place. But for a sequel to one of the scariest movies ever made, it doesn't work. We then see Jesse walk over to his teacher and while walking through the fog that is in the showers, he turns into Freddy and kills his teacher. Later on, Jesse is invited to a pool party by his friend and they start making out. While he's putting his face all on her breasts, a massive green tongue comes out of his mouth. He then runs over to his friend Ron's house instead of staying at a party with many girls and the girl that he's supposedly in love with. Really not making this film look straight at all. So Jesse asks Ron to watch him in his sleep and wake him up if something bad happens like in the first film where Nancy asks Glenn the exact same question. So Jesse starts screaming as Freddy rips himself out of Jesse's body. This scene is actually pretty cool. So then Freddy kills Ron and changes back to Jesse. He goes back to the pool party because the police show up and he ends up transforming into Freddy completely again in front of his friend's eyes. Freddy starts attacking her but she manages to survive. Freddy gives up and disappears. Then he jumps out the ground and starts cutting everyone up. This scene is actually the best part of the movie and it's one of the most memorable scenes in the entire series. Sure, not a lot of people die but Freddy's line you're all my children now remains one of my favourite one-liners in the entire series. You are all my children now. Then a guy starts telling Freddy to calm down. What a dumbass. So he unsurprisingly gets killed and then Lisa's dad comes out with a shotgun and starts shooting at Freddy. Freddy walks into the fence and disappears into a fiery blaze. Lisa then goes down to the power plant where Freddy used to work and take his victims. She eventually finds him and says, Jesse, I love you. And then Freddy is killed by the power of love. What the fuck? He gets blown up, decapitated, ripped apart by the souls he's consumed, and he dies from the power of love. That's the power of love.
This film tries too hard just to get a happy ending, which makes no sense as they go back on it at the end. So Freddy bursts on fire and out of his burnt corpse comes Jesse. Then in the final scene we see Jesse get on the bus with Lisa and her friend and he gets skeptical when the bus starts speeding up. Eventually we see Freddy's glove smash its way through Lisa's friend's chest and we see the bus swerving around with Freddy's laugh accompanying it. Well at least it goes to show that love cannot kill Freddy. It also gives us a pretty great fake out ending. This film is one that has actually grown on me in the two years since my review of it. It's incredibly cheesy and actually a lot of fun. It's one of the classic so bad it's good movies in my opinion. Everything is just so stupid and strange that it's hilarious. However, my main issue with it is that it's called Freddy's Revenge and Freddy is only seen for 13 minutes on the screen. I guess that they called it Freddy it possesses an annoying little bi-curious kid who screams like a girl, nobody would want to see it. Freddy's makeup in the movie looks fantastic, which is not something people normally say in regards to this movie. The makeup artists were different in this movie than in the previous, which means they essentially had to start again from the ground up, and a lot of the makeup is actually rushed. However, I think the new design makes Freddy look much more like a monster. He doesn't look like a regular burnt person. He's a monster. Despite the fact that the movie is really fun, at the end you wonder whether you watched a Freddy movie or a film about a teenage boy trying to come to grips with his sexuality with Freddy being used as a metaphor for it. The people who made the movie have all said that the homoerotic subtext was unintentional, however most of them have since agreed that it really is present. The characters are sadly incredibly bland, however Freddy is as awesome as always and is actually kind of creepy in the two big scenes that he's in. Despite it being a fun cheesy movie, it's honestly not very good. It's not the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's still a long way away from being a good film. I'd say only see it if you want to see all the Freddy movies and even then go in understanding that the movie isn't like any of the other movies and a lot of the time doesn't really feel like a Freddy movie at all. I give A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 Freddy's Revenge a C-. minus.